Hi, welcome to another video. So you'll probably guess it's pretty obvious what I'm going to be talking about. It's the Shenzhen Expertech Technology 2046 touchscreen controller. So I've prepared this on the screen already for you. Um, this will give you a basic introduction to how to get the touchscreen going. I'm using Micro C Pro for PIC32, but once you've seen the uh, source code, you'll be able to figure it out for yourself for your own microcontroller. So it's fairly simple. Uh, got some details of the data sheet uh, and put them into practice. Right, so I'll just clear this screen by resetting the microcontroller. The camera's in the way, so this is a bit tricky. There we go. The touch screen on the 7 inch TFTs from China is actually pretty uh, low resolution. This is uh, working at 8 bit mode at the moment. Uh, you can set it at 12 bit, not actually tried it. Uh, it was tough enough getting this working by itself. The timing, clock frequencies, that sort of stuff, it can all go wrong. But so, what I've done, I've set up in this corner down here, if I can touch it quick enough. So, that's just drawing little red circles, as you probably guessed. Now, if I flick that quickly, you see some white ones are flicked up. So at this location, when the X and Y is at that location, it changes the red circle to a white circle. Uh, a smaller circle as well. There we go, so this is just a, a rough guide. There's no calibration or anything on there yet. Uh, depending on the cl clock frequency, you need to adjust the offset. There's loads more needs to be done, but this is just you know a working example. If I hit this corner down here, there we go. That clears the screen. And you start again. Starts again, but obviously writing in white. You can have, uh, have it writing dots, lines, circles, horizontal lines, vertical lines, or just you know, choose location depending on where you hit the screen. Um, this isn't a fantastic touch screen as you can see, but and there's no calibration as yet, so but it's it's not it's not bad. You can You see, uh, as you can see, the touchscreen is fairly accurate. It's just low resolution, uh, and it's just a few simple lines of code to get that. So, if I reset the microcontroller as opposed to resetting the screen. Right, let me uh, show you some clock frequencies and code. Actually, before I show you some code, so I've now set this, this is refreshing the screen every couple of milliseconds. So you see at the moment the default is 116 and 2 for the X and Y. So if I just touch somewhere on the screen, so you see that's 50 and 64. So if I, well, for example, start here, so it's not drawing now because the screen is being refreshed but you see the raw coordinates from the XPT microcontroller uh, you see 16 10 is down the bottom and I'll move this up you see that goes up to 116 you see this is the X there and that's the Y so if we're looking at this X You see it's down to seven, nearly off the screen there. As I say, it's not calibrated. 
and you've got to press the screen fairly hard. So there's seven on the far right. So this is unmodified raw data. And you see it goes up to 116. So from naught to roughly 120. And the Y is naught to 120 again. So you've got 120, but you've got to multiply that for an 800 pixel long screen by 480 deep. So that's why the resolution is pretty poor. It's a shame these numbers are yeah, low. But yes, without calibration, it's not bad. I'll show you the code to see what I, you'll see what I did. Well, that's refreshing the screen once every half a second. So now I'll just get it to not refresh the screen. Right, here we go. So that's now programmed and I've changed the size of the circle and pen size. And you see it's a lot bigger. So depending on what you want to do, if it's for a kid or locations for certain programs, it's entirely up to you how you use it, obviously. Two, oh, four, and remember, if I touch this screen down here, so it's now gone to white. But you see the white circle, but I've now got a big pen size. So the white circle is bigger, and the pen size is bigger. And I haven't got any boxes drawn, but remember if I touch this bottom right hand corner down here, it clears the screen and start again. So I thought this was gonna take me a month of Sundays, but it's not been too bad at all. Right, let me show you some code. Right, so this is initialising all the screen above above this section. So if you want to know how to initialise a 7 inch screen, look at my 7 inch screen video, 7 and 5 inch. So the crux of this video, you need to know this, so I'm using SPI 3. So this is Initialise Advanced, SPI Master, setting it to 8 bit. This is a clock frequency. Right, so this microcontroller is currently running at 80 megs and the peripheral clock divisor isn't set so it's not dividing the peripheral clock so what you have to do you have to slow the SPI clock down here so this is dividing the clock 55 times and SPI SS disable the important bits for this touchscreen controller Is the data sheet says it samples the data at the end of the clock signal. The data sheet or some of the drawings show the clock is idle in the low position and then the clock goes high to turn on. Um, but the touchscreen controller does actually work with it low but it becomes intermittent and erratic so I've set it to high. What I'll do I'll quickly show you the data sheet uh, and then this, this is the SPI active to idle. Right, the data sheet says the last two bits on the touchscreen controller should be written, you should write a zero zero to it. Those last two bits actually enable the interrupt pin. So that's what's going on here. So chip select zero, writing to the chip, and then chip select one. And this is just the default for the X position and Y position. When it boots up, this is setting the brush, drawing a rectangle, filling the screen with blue, just writing JB's clock, and this is setting the pen size as demonstrated earlier. So this was the small pen size, three, and when I change it to the larger size, change it to eight. But this can go up to like 50, 60, or more than that, maybe even up to 255, but look at Microelectronica's reference for the pen size. Right, so I haven't got any interrupts. I'm just keeping this video simple. So everything is in a while one loop. 
if the X position is greater than 116, it's saying the X position is equal to 116. That just stops the red dot going off the screen. And similarly for the Y, it's greater than 119. The Y position is 119, stops the Y axis going off the screen. This is getting the raw data, so you can int to string, X position and string. TFT, that's writing the X position and Y position. So you int to string for the Y position. I've got a five millisecond delay, which I found is needed in certain situations. If you try and read and write to the touchscreen controller too quickly, it just locks up and all you get is a horizontal movement and no vertical. So look at your delays and timing. If it's too quick, it's not going to work. So you see, these are the two bits I've added recently. If the X position is less than or equal to 12 and the Y position is less than or equal to 12, TFT full screen blue. So that's the bottom right hand corner. When I touch the bottom right hand corner, the coordinates are less than or equal to 12 and it gives me a blue screen. If I touch the left hand corner, left hand bottom corner, the X position is greater than 112, Y position is less than or equal to 12, gives me TFT set pen to, to white and that's the size, pen size one. So this is drawing the circle. I initially had a horizontal line. This is now drawing the circle. So TFT circle. So it's 800, which is the width of the screen. 800 minus X position times 7. So we're multiplying the raw data by 7. Plus 125. So that's just the offset with everything set on this screen. Uh, and then the Y position, 500, oh, so top to bottom, it's actually 480, but 500 just, just gives me correction. 500 minus Y position times 4. So we're multiplying the Y position times 4. Uh, and then that's the radius of the circle, 2. And then this is the important bit here. So if RB4 underscore bit equals 0, that's the interrupt of the touchscreen controller wire to RB4, so if RB4 is 0, that means it's seen me touch the screen. Chip select is 0. The writing, SPI write, so 0B, now this first digit, this 1, is the control bit, and it has to be a 1, otherwise everything else is ignored. So that's a control bit. Then 101 looks at the X axis. Look at the data sheet and you see what the others mean. These last two bits have to be zero, or one of them at least, otherwise the touchscreen interrupt is disabled. So it's writing to the controller asking for the X position. And that's reading the buffer. So it's reading the X position. We scroll down. Then bit 8 again is 1, and then 0, 0, 001 is the Y position. This is actually 12 bit or 8 bits. You can see it's, I'm reading 8 bit there, that denoted by the 1. I'm writing to the touchscreen chip asking for the Y coordinates, and Y position equals SPI read buffer 2. These are some dummies I put in, but you can see I've rammed them out to read the uh, temperature or battery voltage, that sort of stuff. Anyway, so we're finished there, and chip select equals one. And that's it. Can't scroll any further down. That's the code, so... If I show you the scope... Right, so I've set this uh, scope up to a single shot. See up here in the corner. And what I'll do, touch the screen and you'll see the touch panel chip select and then the clock. There we go, so that's captured it. So this is 200 microseconds per division. So you can see all our clock and touch panel is in here. So if I open this out. You 
need to clear these cursors. So the green is the touch panel. So uh, sorry, the green is the chip select. So that's coming down. So these first, there's there's eight clock pulses here. These first eight are writing the eight bits to the touchscreen controller, requesting the X position. And the second lot of eight is giving us back the X position. But these are just the clock pulses. And then. This is requesting the Y position, clock pulses, and then reading back the Y position. And then you see little green line, the touchscreen controller goes up. Unfortunately, I've only got two channels on this scope, so I can't show you the data back. But what you can see here, when the clock is idle, when it's turned off or not doing anything, it's up here, so it's high. And so when the clock turns on, it's coming low. So in case you're not familiar with clock signals, this is high. If I inverted that bit and changed it to low, the clock signal is going to be idle down here and then flick up. But so this is idle high and then the clock turns on low to work. And obviously the touch panel, chip select, is high and that comes low to request data or send data to the chip. Hopefully it gives you some idea. So clock is high when idle. So let's give you a rundown on this touchscreen controller. Hopefully it's given you some insight. Let me just clear this screen again. Actually, I'm using a, a touch pen. Came with Michael Electronica's screens, but you don't have to use this. So, TY, thank you. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, it's been helpful. Thank you very much.